Hey, welcome back everybody. Good Tuesday. Hopefully we're having a wonderful day out there so far, but unfortunately we do have a soon-to-be hurricane moving towards the United States, specifically you folks in the Gulf Coast from Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, and even areas inland past that are going to see the largest impacts from this storm, uh, which is Francine. So uh, again, getting here kind of towards the middle of September, only on that F name. Again, this was a year that was uh, projected and predicted to be kind of a super hyperactive hurricane season. And so far, uh, that hasn't really panned out in terms of the number of storms we've had. Now, the storms that we have had, generally speaking, have been pretty uh, impressive. We had Barrel for the B name. We had Debbie for the D name. Uh, now, Francine for the F name. All three of those were storms that impacted the United States directly. So, uh, again, not a ton of storms so far this year, but we are seeing uh, plenty with large impacts. And unfortunately, uh, Francine here is definitely going to join that list by the time the year is done. Uh, now, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorology major at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, here to give you the latest information on that forecast and what has changed uh, since we last talked yesterday and what is on the road, or excuse me, coming on down the road, I should say, uh, as we kind of end through this week. Uh, now, also, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Hit that bell for the latest notifications, like the video, and consider sharing it with somebody that you might know, especially down through the coastal areas of Louisiana. Uh, love to get that information out to everybody just so they kind of know what to expect uh, with this storm system. Uh, I think with all that said, though, let's go ahead and jump on into that forecast. Again, we're going to start right with Francine. That is the big topic here. Uh, and uh, overall, a relatively impressive looking tropical storm, a tad lopsided right now. You're probably looking at this big area of convection here and saying, well, is that where the storm is? No, not quite, actually. Uh, it's right down here in this area, uh, not far from the Mexico coastline. So um, uh, again, it is fighting a little bit of dry air this morning, kind of this area right in here that you see that uh, doesn't have much of these brighter colors. That is some dry air trying to ingest into the storm. And we talked about this. There is a ton of dry air uh, not far from the system. The big question mark was, would it ingest? And it is ingesting a little bit, uh, which is definitely good news. However, unfortunately, we are seeing some hot towers here or just some very deep convection forming near that center of circulation. So that's going to probably try to work out some of that dry air here. Uh, and again, the storm's got all day today and Monday much of tomorrow to uh, organize and strengthen as much as it can before making landfall in Louisiana sometime uh, Wednesday afternoon or evening. Uh, so again, overall speaking, a pretty impressive looking storm on satellite here, at least on the infrared, uh, definitely has that tropical storm look to it. And I would be very surprised if we don't get to hurricane status, potentially uh, even up towards a stronger hurricane. So uh, taking a look here at the latest uh, kind of forecast cone and watches and warnings that we have for the storm. Uh, again, this is uh, straight from the National Hurricane Center, their latest update. In fact, I'll even uh, refresh the map here just so we're really uh, up to date, which means we're going to have to move all of this back off again. Sorry. Um, here we go. Okay. Uh, let me also put the tropical cyclone map back on. Sorry about that. All right. So again, right now the storm is out here over portions of the um, Gulf of Mexico. Again, Francine is a 990 millibar um, low pressure system with winds. It looks like sitting at 55 miles an hour or uh, excuse me, maybe that's 55 knots, potentially 65 miles an hour. Uh, either way. Uh, yeah, I think that's what that means. That's uh Sorry, it's backwards there. But uh, either way, again, a pretty good uh, looking tropical storm, a strong one getting down near 990 millibars and will continue to strengthen throughout the day today, likely getting up to hurricane status, likely category one hurricane status here uh, will be kind of what we're watching for. Uh, and so by the time we're getting into overnight tonight and into tomorrow, we could potentially be looking at a category two storm as this moves up towards the coastline of Louisiana. Uh, latest forecast is for winds to max out at around 100 miles an hour. Uh, again, is kind of the thinking from uh, the National Hurricane Center. Uh, now, after that, the storm will eventually work inland. Uh, and again, we'll still have a tropical storm through basically the entire state of Louisiana uh, up through southern Mississippi as well. And then eventually weakening into a tropical depression and a post-tropical cyclone here as it works really right up the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, this track couldn't be really right more over that region. So, uh, you know, definitely it's going to bring some impacts here. And we'll start with the current watches and mornings. All of these kind of darker red colors, and I'll get the cyclone map off the screen so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, but all of this, um, I know the colors are very similar, but all these kind of darker maroonish colors for red, those are tropical storm mornings. Uh, these brighter reds, almost kind of pinkish colors down this way, uh, are hurricane warnings and also uh, storm surge warnings in those purple regions. So storm surge will be a big deal with the storm, and we'll take a look at that storm surge map here in a moment. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, anytime you get a tropical system, especially a hurricane, one that could get up to category two strength moving towards Louisiana, generally that's uh, unfortunately a recipe for uh, you know pretty high storm surge values just because a lot of Louisiana is actually at or below sea level. New Orleans is a city that is basically sitting in a bowl below the uh, ocean and it's just kind of man-made uh, you know, to be able to stay there. So uh, it's very easy for the ocean to kind of overtake some of these communities and you folks are all too familiar with that here down towards Louisiana. Uh, so if you're in the flood prone area, obviously you're going to want to you know, do something. If you're under an evacuation order, absolutely listen to it because uh, you can outrun wind, uh, but you cannot outrun the water. And that is really the key takeaway. In fact, storm surge and flooding is the number one killer uh, with tropical systems here in uh, the world. So uh, definitely something to uh, take very seriously. All right, latest model guidance. I'm not going to show you a lot of models because honestly, the models are in pretty good agreement and we really just need to get down to the impacts at this point. But I will show you the two big ones, the GFS and the European. So this is this afternoon and let me just move this into this evening. Again, a strengthening tropical system here as it moves towards the coast of Louisiana overnight tonight continuing to strengthen here, millibar wise dropping down. Uh, the GFS gets this down to about 965 to 970 millibars by the time we're getting up tomorrow morning. After that though, you'll notice that the storm uh, begins to weaken slightly or at least level off somewhat on approach. Again, that dry air, it's fighting a little bit. Also gonna be fighting a tad bit of wind shear as it moves inland towards Louisiana. Uh, but either way, we've got a compact hurricane here, about 973 millibars on the latest GFS. Uh, that would be a pretty feisty category two, potentially a category three major hurricane. It'd be right there kind of on the border uh, with a pressure uh, with that number. So again, the latest landfall, uh, and again, I could, I guess I could go back to the track, but just know right here into the central coast of Louisiana, uh, kind of into the intracoastal city area uh, up near Lafayette, those areas I think is really where the core of the storm will go over. Now, the models have been trending a little bit further east over the past uh, day or so, uh, so maybe, you know, more instead of central Louisiana coastline, more east central Louisiana coastline could be where the center of this storm goes, uh, and that's something we'll need to watch out for. But also, remember, if you're on the right-hand side of this storm, that's where storm surge will be the worst. So places like New Orleans, uh, even back towards Biloxi, Mississippi, these are areas that are going to definitely see some storm surge out of this being on that right-hand side. Uh, and we'll definitely need to watch for that. Uh, again, this is a very low-lying part of the country, so it does not take much push to really get the ocean to kind of overtake uh, some of these areas. So watching for that. Again, this is uh, Wednesday afternoon. The GFS has landfall again as a strong hurricane and then eventually moves inland towards Mississippi by the time we get overnight Wednesday and then into Thursday morning. This is moving right over the state of Mississippi. And we'll look at those inland impacts a little bit more in depth here in just a second. But uh, that's the GFS taking a look at the European model. Also uh, kind of in agreement with the GFS, although a tad weaker, I would say the Euro is. Uh, again, strengthens the storm for sure, gets this Again, probably near category two, category one status. This is kind of borderline between the two here at about 980 millibars Wednesday afternoon uh, before again leveling off a little bit up, up, excuse me, on those final hours of approach towards Louisiana uh, and then uh, kind of uh, again, moving inland there um, during the evening hours of Wednesday. So um, the timing here, again, I think is late afternoon Wednesday into Thursday, uh, or really, let me rephrase that. Sorry, it's very early in the morning. <laughs> late afternoon Wednesday into Wednesday evening, I think is the most likely landfall, probably uh, from about 1 p.m. to midnight, that time frame. And I know that's a big range, uh, but you know, exact landfall is important, but you're going to see impacts well before landfall and even after landfall a little bit as well. So I just know that general time frame is whenever the worst of it will probably move on through. Again, um, the model's basically in almost perfect agreement here on landfall location, uh, right here, again, near Intracoastal City, maybe a little bit east of there uh, towards um, the, some of those other communities, uh, which I guess, you know, we can pull up the map. Unfortunately, I'm not uh, fully diverse in the geography here of Louisiana. Yeah, kind of back towards the Morgan City area. I'd see, I'd say uh, Intracoastal Highway back towards Morgan City uh, and kind of those communities, probably the most likely place for landfall uh, at this time. So sorry, I had to, <laughs> had to pull up the map there on the fly to find that. But um, then again, like the uh, GFS shows, the storm moves inland over Mississippi for our Wednesday and Thursday. And again, there will be impacts inland. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but let's really break down those coastal impacts really quickly here. So again, the number one concern with this storm will be storm surge. Again, I've said it plenty of times. I'll say it again. Uh, this is a part of the country that floods very easily. It does, excuse me. It does not take much. And because of that, we are expecting five to 10 feet of storm surge 
uh, for much of the central Louisiana coastline from Cameron all the way uh, towards Port uh, Fourchon is potentially how you pronounce that uh, and kind of through the Vermilion Bay area. So again, five to 10 feet of storm surge is more than enough to cause problems. Again, think about being 10 feet above uh, sea level in Louisiana, you got to go away inland. So uh, again, 10 feet is more than enough to cause problems here. And even to the east of there through the mouth of the Mississippi River, again, back towards Port Fourchon, uh, four to seven feet of storm surge. And again, you folks back through New Orleans and Mississippi, storm surge will be a concern, two to four feet of it. Uh, in fact, even a couple feet of storm surge back towards the Alabama coastline is possible. Uh, and also one to three foot of storm surge through much of the Texas coastline. So uh, storm surge, the number one concern I have with this storm system, uh, and you're going to want to, you know, take those precautions. Again, if you're under an evacuation order, I cannot stress how important it is to listen to the, those officials uh, and get out of Dodge. Now, again, we're going to have ocean flooding. We'll also have some freshwater flooding, though. The uh, greatest flash flood risk for this storm, again, a moderate level. This is the second highest level they can issue through uh, the New Orleans area, back towards Baton Rouge, uh, uh, and uh, again, just much of Louisiana here and southern Mississippi. Uh, again, under that threat, but even well inland, look at these, uh, you know, flooding concerns going all the way up the Mississippi River Valley and even some places that are not really where the center of the storm is going to go, I think could have some flooding concerns. Uh, we'll talk about that later on in the video as well here. But just know, again, uh, that is going to be a concern with this storm system. Uh, also, wind speeds. Again, this is something probably a lot of people, are, you know, click on the video for. They want to know how strong is the wind going to get. Uh, and it definitely will get pretty strong here. Tropical storm force wind speed probabilities just about guaranteed for the Louisiana coastline. Uh, but again, this could even stretch pretty far inland. I think portions of uh, southwestern uh, Mississippi here could definitely see some tropical storm force wind speeds before eventually dying out as this gets kind of towards central Mississippi and north of there. But uh, again, it's going to be definitely gusty there uh, for you folks where landfall is and even inland a little bit. It's a relatively quick moving storm system. Uh, so again, those winds will travel inland a bit. Hurricane force wind speed probabilities, again, I think where this makes landfall, we're definitely going to see some hurricane force wind speeds, uh, probably even inland just a little bit. You know, if this is a category two storm or even just a category one storm at landfall, it's going to take a little bit of time for that friction to really take over and weaken those wind speeds, especially over a state like Louisiana. Again, very flat, very swampy. So uh, it's a lot less friction than if this were making landfall in Maine, for example, where it's a lot more rocky and hilly. Uh, and that friction kind of does work a good bit quicker. But over this part of the country, again, it's going to take a little bit longer uh, for those vectors to kind of move in uh, in towards the storm and weaken it. So uh, definitely the hurricane force wind speed probabilities are there. And I think uh, this will probably get upticked a little bit as well uh, before landfall tomorrow. All right, let's show some models for wind speed. Um, again, this is, you know, a concern we have, uh, and uh, this is why. So this is getting uh, into, this, well, let me start here, actually. This afternoon, again, it'll be breezy, I think, over portions of coastal Texas and Louisiana, but the real uh, concern for wind doesn't really come until tomorrow. So you still got probably one more day to get anything done you want to get done outside of the rain that you're already seeing. Uh, but uh, it shouldn't be too much of a wind concern today. Tomorrow, however, uh, look at these wind totals moving in towards southern Louisiana. Uh, again, gusting up past hurricane strength. We could be gusting up near 90, 100 miles an hour, uh, depending on the strength of the storm system here through coastal Louisiana as the core moves through Wednesday afternoon and evening. Uh, and you folks in places like New Orleans, I mean, it's going to be windy too. As the sun's going down Thursday, uh, you know, wind speeds gusting definitely into tropical storm force wind speed. Uh, and, you know, that's going to be enough to definitely bring down a couple trees, I think, here. It could bring some power outage concerns as well. Again, anytime you're gusting up near hurricane strength, you'll see that uh, concern there. Again, this is overnight Wednesday into Thursday. And then by the time we're waking up Thursday morning, uh, that wind moves further inland uh, through portions of Mississippi and Alabama. So let's go ahead and move this ahead into time. Here we go. This is waking up Thursday morning. Uh, still some tropical storm force winds moving relatively far inland. We'll have to see how far they bring these tropical storm mornings inland. Uh, I will note generally the models overdo it a little bit here on how long the winds last past the coastline. Um, but I do think we will see tropical storm force winds for someone, uh, you know, pretty far in from the beaches. And again, that could bring some power outage concerns. But luckily, I think by Thursday afternoon, I think this is getting overdone a little bit. You'll notice Thursday afternoon, some of these numbers are still up near 60 uh, miles an hour. I think it'll be more like 40, maybe gusting up to 50. And again, these are gusts, not sustained winds. Um, but then eventually that kind of weakens as the storm moves up through the Ohio River Valley. And again, could definitely be gusty for sure, uh, but not anything um, super out of the ordinary here uh, with winds gusting up near 30 by Friday. So 
Again, that is definitely a concern we have. Another concern we have is the tornado threat. Uh, our day two outlook here, not for today, but for tomorrow, Wednesday, we've got a 5% chance of a tornado within a 25 mile radius in that brown area. And again, uh, this is going to extend out from the center of the storm. Um, you know, so New Orleans, Biloxi, uh, Mobile, even back towards the Panhandle of Florida, back towards Destin, Panama City, uh, where we could see a couple tornadoes tomorrow for sure as these outer rain bands move inland. Uh, and it's also going to be a concern further inland. Again, this is Wednesday after landfall on Wednesday into Thursday. We've got a marginal risk already for much of Alabama, uh, portions of eastern Mississippi and the Florida Panhandle. I'm uh, quite concerned about an inland tornado threat with this storm. Anytime, and we've already seen it on satellite like this morning. Anytime you get dry air ingesting into uh, a tropical system as that move in, moves inland, excuse me, uh, those are known to be generally prolific tornado producers. We saw it earlier this year with Debbie in North Carolina. We had dozens of tornadoes uh, because again, of all of that dry air that was being ingested into the storm, uh, we could very well see a similar scenario on Thursday. So uh, it's, it's going to be a multiple day kind of storm system here. The worst of it Wednesday with those coastal impacts, but then inland impacts on Thursday with tornado potential uh, and flooding potential as well. So let's time this out for you a little bit more here. And I'm just now realizing this video is going way longer than I expected. But uh, again, a lot of information we need to get out for you. So uh, this afternoon, uh, Thursday, uh, today is not Thursday, today is Tuesday. <laughs> this afternoon for Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, the rain is already beginning and we already have this stalled out frontal boundary over Florida and that's kind of what led to Francine forming here again at the tail of that front. We see it quite often here in the Gulf and that's exactly what happened. So uh, a rainy afternoon for Florida, really the entire Gulf Coast I would say uh, and even into portions of Texas. But we go into overnight tonight and into tomorrow. By the time we're waking up Wednesday morning, this is when things really begin to go downhill through much of Louisiana. Those heavy rain bands working on in, also the, that tornadic activity beginning. Uh, look at these. Uh, I mean, these are some impressive cells coming off the Gulf, rotating in towards uh, the Florida Panhandle. Again, need to watch those for, uh, for tornado potential. I think very likely to have multiple tornadoes tomorrow. Uh, and then here we go. Here's the peak of it. This is Wednesday afternoon, the high resolution rapid refresh model bringing landfall about uh, one o'clock central time. Uh, to three o'clock, that general time frame. Uh, and again, this is when the worst of the surge will be. This is when the worst of uh, the winds will be. And again, watching this side of the storm for that worst part of the surge there through the east coast uh, of Louisiana. Now we uh, move this further ahead into time. I'm sorry. Um, we move this further ahead into time. There we go. It would help if I click the right button. Uh, through the evening hours of Wednesday, continuing to work inland, that tornado threat continuing, heavy rainfall, tropical storm force winds working pretty far inland. Uh, and then this gets us past the midnight hour on Wednesday into Thursday. And again, a nocturnal tornado threat will be a concern with any of these cells, heavy rainfall and gusty winds uh, continuing into the overnight. But that's as far out as the model goes for now. Uh, but again, I expect Thursday there to also be trouble there uh, in the tornado department. All right, that's the latest on Francine. What else is happening in the tropics? And we're going to kind of gloss, not gloss over this. We're going to talk about it, but we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. Uh, but we do have two other areas to watch, one of which has a high chance of development here out into the central Atlantic, another one sitting at a medium percent chance of development, about a 40% chance in the next seven days with that one. Uh, and then if you could see it, about a 70% chance with the other one. Uh, so what does this look like on satellite right now? Again, uh, nothing too alarming. Nothing is screaming that it's you know about to become a tropical system. But again, uh, multiple of these waves in here uh, do have that chance to try to develop into something. Uh, and uh, some of our models do suggest that they will. In fact, if we take a look at our ensembles here uh, for our... Um, Sorry, I was uh, trying to fix something there. Uh, if we look at the ensemble data here, again, a lot of the European members do develop a storm out here, many into a hurricane. The good news, most of them kind of curve this out to sea. Again, we've got this big cluster of uh, storms, uh, or it's one storm, but all the ensemble showing where it could be about 10 days from now. Again, kind of out over just the central Atlantic, not really bothering anybody. A couple of these members try to move something uh, closer to land. We'll watch it for sure, but right now, uh, again, nothing too alarming that way, so we won't spend too much time on it, uh, again, just uh, for the sake of uh, not boring you. All right, so back home, what's going on? Um, again, right now, things are actually relatively quiet. We do have a little bit of low pressure kind of working on through portions of the Dakotas. That has fired up some showers and storms here through that region. Uh, obviously, Francine, we've already looked at that down on satellite. But uh, other than that, we do have a trough of some cold air moving up through portions of eastern Canada and the northeast. Uh, that could lead to a little bit of uh, maybe some lake effect precipitation today. But I really think yesterday was the worst of the lake effect. Uh, but definitely still some cooler temperatures up here uh, and sagging all the way on the backside of that low pressure, which 
which is very occluded at this point, um, we do have this kind of stalled out stationary front that again is moving all the way back down into the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what we're seeing on satellite right now. If we take a look at radar imagery, um, again, most of us are quiet outside of the Gulf and the Midwest. So uh, again, a lot of rain moving through the Gulf Coast. We talked about that. It's been a theme. It's going to continue. Also some showers working on through Nebraska and Iowa uh, and portions of the Dakotas. That will continue this afternoon and work through portions of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Uh, but um, Overall, again, nothing really severe with that, just some more fall-like showers than anything else, uh, although it might be a little warmer than fall. It might not be 40 and rain, but uh, you get the point. Nothing nothing to really worry about uh, severe weather-wise, but that outside of that, things are quiet here. We've got a beautiful day across much of the United States. Now, we kind of time this out for you a little bit. Uh, again, I'm going to kind of ignore what's happening to the south because we already talked about that with Francine, but uh, do note this afternoon, again, a couple showers in this region uh, from Nebraska through Iowa into Wisconsin even southern Minnesota through Minneapolis, and potentially even into Michigan. Again, just some good old-fashioned showers, nothing too severe there. Uh, that kind of swings on through during the Tuesday afternoon, during Tuesday evening, uh, and then we move this all the way ahead. And outside of Francine, which obviously is a big deal, but we've already discussed it, uh, relatively quiet across much of the country. Now, how long will that last? Will that stay that way for the long run? Well, I don't think so. Unfortunately, again, uh, we'll take a look at our 500 millibar map uh, here's Francine. This is making landfall. This is for Wednesday afternoon. At the same time that's going on, we've got another trough working on through the Pacific Northwest, and that uh, is going to cool things down and bring some showers and some mountain snow showers as well. Uh, so that'll swing on through. Could even lead to some low pressure formation uh, through portions of the Dakotas later this week. We'll have to watch that. Uh, but really through much of this week, the big story is just what does Francine do and what's left of it? Um, and what kind of inland flooding concerns will it bring? And again, I do think it will. We'll talk about that for areas even outside of the Ohio River Valley here uh, up next. But um, again, overall, just kind of watching Francine. We've got a big ridge up into Canada. That's going to warm things back up again for sure. So uh, it's kind of a catch-22. We've got this massive ridge over the eastern half of the country. So generally, that would warm things up. But Francine, uh, again, kind of is going to help to bring some cloud cover and showers that are is going to make it really not that warm through portions of the southeast and the Ohio River Valley. But uh, definitely outside of there to the north through the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Northeast, and up into Canada, definitely going to warm up significantly uh, compared to that cool down that we had earlier. Uh, and then in the long run, another big trough looks to maybe dump out west. That could be a storyline uh, for sure that we'll watch, but uh, nothing really set in stone after Francine. All right, let's talk about the coming days. So we'll move this right into kind of Thursday afternoon here. Again, Francine, I know I keep saying the name over and over, but uh, it's just kind of what we're what we're going to have to talk about. So uh, here's the storm system again right over Mississippi. Also at this point, that trough dumping out west, bringing plenty of showers and mountain snow at the same time for you folks. Uh, up into the northern Rockies. So uh, again, I'm concerned about some rainfall here, one through the Ohio River Valley, where we're going to see plenty of rain just from Francine itself, uh, but also through portions of the western Carolinas. We're going to have a bit of a squeeze play here. We've got strong high pressure off the coast of the northeast. Uh, that is going to really bring flow out of the Atlantic. At the same time, Francine's bringing flow out of the Atlantic and the Gulf as well. Uh, that combined with a little bit of cold air damming at the surface potentially could be enough to really ring out a lot of precipitation, specifically over the mountains of Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, uh, but also inland here through Kentucky, um, portions of uh, Missouri, Nashville, Memphis, uh, you know, these other cities going to see some heavy rain out of this for sure. Uh, but as we get into the weekend, watch what happens again. You'll notice most of that rain here actually in this region of the southeast uh, where we can have a pretty showery weekend. Uh, and again, this could even be sustained long periods of moderate rainfall for some folks that have some elevation uh, kind of working uh, in their favor for that rain. Uh, now, outside of that, um, uh, sorry, I just realized that there's a tropical storm down in the Pacific that's uh, moving up towards Mexico. Uh, sorry, we, <laughs> you learn something new every day when you're looking at the model. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, again, the big story though this weekend is whatever is left of Francine and how high pressure in that interacts. Again, look at this. This is this weekend. It is just raining and raining into western South Carolina, northeast Georgia, uh, through the western Carolinas. Continues to rain into South Carolina for a bit there, even into next week. Uh, and then after that, in the long run, we do get a bigger storm system potentially trying to develop out 
uh, towards the Rockies. So uh, definitely going to be an interesting active stretch here. Again, just to show this to you in precipitable water, uh, look at these uh, colors just hanging out over uh, portions of the southeast, specifically again, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. It really, uh, it stays that way for a while, even into next week. So we could have a prolonged period of cloudy, rainy weather. Uh, and uh, if we just take a look at rainfall totals over the next week or so, uh, again, a lot of rain back towards Louisiana. We talked about that up the Mississippi River Valley, uh, but even through the southeast, um, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, going to see some pretty good rain out of this system. Uh, and then moving this northward through the Ohio River Valley and Mississippi River Valley, again, a good three or so inches of rain for a lot of us. Uh, but specifically, again, I want to point out this area right in here, upstate South Carolina, northeast Georgia, and western North Carolina. I do think some topography is really going to ring out some rain. I wouldn't be surprised to see some places get half a foot of rain. Uh, through this weekend and into early next week uh, is not out of the question in those higher elevations. So I need to watch up for that for sure. Last thing we'll take a look at here are temperatures. Uh, again, most of us uh, are going to warm up due to that ridge, but those of us seeing uh, cloud cover and rainfall from Francine, it's going to stay cool. So I know it's kind of a weird looking map here. We've got really below average temperatures through the southeast while everyone else is heating up. Again, you would expect that due to that big ridge in place, uh, but with the influence of that tropical system under it. Uh, and then, you know, we just kind of continue that trend. Again, uh, that tropical moisture is going to hang around a while. So even in the next week, it could stay below average for the southeast and above average for just about everyone else uh, outside of the west. Again, out west, it's going to cool down due to that trough. So Alrighty, folks. Well, that's what I got for you here on this Tuesday. I've got a busy day ahead of me. A lot of classes. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are quite the gauntlet for me. Uh, kind of a full day affair. So, um, yeah. Anyway, with that said, I do appreciate y'all watching. If you haven't already subscribed, definitely do so. Uh, stay safe out there. Keep an eye to the sky, and I'll see you all next time.